Hello and welcome to my introduction to clinical anatomy. I'm going to uh, go through uh, the introduction to anatomy, to gross anatomy and clinical anatomy as part of my anatomy series alongside my 3D library uh, and I've added a link at the end of this. So uh, the aims and objectives please feel free to look at in your own time. I want to start off just by going through the definition of anatomy. So it's actually derived from the Greek uh, and it means to cut, to uh, cut um, and to uh, investigate. So the different types of uh, anatomy that we have, we have microscopic anatomy, gross anatomy or macroscopic anatomy and then we have different approaches. We have comparative anatomy, embryology, regional anatomy, surface anatomy and cystic, uh, uh, systemic anatomy. So let me just uh, go through uh, some of the, the different regions, some of the uh, terminology that you're going to come into contact with during your uh, studying of uh, the subject of human anatomy. So when we talk about the head region, if we start in the, in the region of the head, we talk about the, it's, it's also referred to as cephalic. Uh, so this is something you're going to come across when you see things such as brachiocephalic, when we talk about certain vessels, brachial means arm, cephalad, cephalad means head, cephalic. Uh, so then we have regions such as the frontal region, the orbital region, the buckle, which refers to the chin, the mental, which is known as the uh, as the, uh, the 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 chin, um, then we have the cervical region, the neck, the thoracic region, the lumbar region, and the region of the pelvis. And I'm going to go through all of this in uh, more detail with you. So please uh, just look at this slide just to get an overview of of some of the terminology, and I've put these down for you. Uh, with the anatomical land, landmarks and some of the, the common terms that you're going to come into uh, contact with during your studies. So when we talk about anatomy, we talk about major planes, planes, anatomical planes that we're going to look at and discuss uh, throughout uh, your training. You're going to use these and also uh, if you're in any kind of medical practice or clinician of any kind or in any kind of clinical training, uh, these are very important uh, terms that you need to understand in relation to your patient. Things like MRI, CT, X-ray, etc. So let's look at some of the major planes. We can see here we have the transverse plane that we have in this, uh, this light kind of pink colour uh, that we have. We have the sagittal plane, which we can see here uh, just kind of transecting the body down the middle. And we can break these planes up into ventral or anterior or dorsal or posterior. So dorsal is the posterior aspect, ventral is the anterior aspect. So we also can uh, discuss uh, terminology uh, via cranial and caudal, uh, superior and inferior. So something may be superior and the other part might be inferior. We can also talk about proximal and distal. So the hand is distal from the shoulder, and the shoulder is proximal from the hand. We also talk about medial and lateral, so we could say that the jugular notch is medial to the region of the shoulder. So all of these terms are very, very important for your understanding, and these are terms that you really need to comprehend just for the basic com concepts of anatomy. So please just review uh, the idea of proximal and distal. And distal uh, is in the word itself, distance, distal from an object. So something that is further away, it's more distal. If it's closer to the midline, it's more proximal. Some other planes that we co uh, commonly see, we see sagittal sections. Uh, these are sections that are very useful in teaching. When you look at prosections in the cadaver lab or models, you're going to look at sagittal sections, transverse sections, and coronal sections. And here we can see a transverse section, such as you might see in an MRI or a CT, uh, as well as coronal, which you may see in uh, MRI and CT as well, and of course sagittal. So all of these are very important and not just for your uh, basic comprehension of anatomy, but as you start to go on uh, within your clinical training. 
So all transverse sections are viewed from below the inferior surface. This applies to CTs, MRIs, etc. So you're looking from the feet to the head. So you're looking, when you look at these cross sections down, uh, as, as I've said, you're looking from, uh, from down the feet upwards to the direction of the head. Therefore, when you're looking at a, a transverse section through uh, either a cadaveric specimen, specimen such as this, or uh, in imaging, you are looking at the structures uh, uh, from the, the foot end up. We also talk about supine and prone positioning. This is very important, uh, you know, whether the patient is in a supine position or prone position. Prone is face down. It's often confused with supine and um, face up. Some people use the phrase soup is navel to help them remember the meaning of the latter word. Prostate technically also means face down. So. These are uh, just some ways that you can uh, think of uh, remembering supine and prone. So a very important thing as well is the uh, underlying osteology. And um, in all my videos, I, I strongly emphasize the importance of knowing your bones uh, and some of the important bony landmarks, which we'll start to go through as we progress through these anatomy lectures. Um, so the, uh, when we look at the basic skeleton, we look at something called the axial skeleton, and this is composed of six parts. It's got the human skull, the ossicles of the middle ear, and the hyoid bone of the throat, and uh, the rib cage, the sternum, and the vertebral column itself. Then we have the axial skeleton, and uh, the appendicular skeleton together form the complete skeleton. So the axial skeleton, we can see here the uh, in, in lighter pink, uh, so we have the skull, uh, the ossicles, and the rib cage, the sternum, and the vertebral column. Then the appendages, uh, appendicular skeleton, is our appendages, which we can see here in light blue. And one of the things I always think is a, a good way to start on the understanding of anatomy is to think about the osteology in relation to the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which of course is the various plexi to the peripheries. So it corresponds with the axial skeleton, central nervous system, the CNS with the axial skeleton, and the PNS with the peripheral nervous system. And we'll start to link that together as we go through. Uh, so please also note the uh, important regions that we have and uh, really review your osteology. It will make uh, the understanding and comprehension uh, so much uh, easier. So what can we learn about uh, one from their bones? Well, we can look at teeth and reveal the age and the remains. And if they belong to a child or adolescent, human teeth break through in predictable pattern and they offer a fairly reliable estimate between 5 months and 21 years. Um, we have the epiphyseal union, which are areas of the femur that gradually fuse as the person ages, and this can help estimate young ages uh, as if the teeth are missing. So this is very useful in uh, forensics, in forensic medicine and uh, forensic anatomy. The skull and the pelvic girdle are two giveaways in determining sex. The male and female skulls show some differences, but the pelvic girdle, uh, a woman's, is far wider than the man's. Um, and there are uh, some uh, dramatic identifiers of sex. Uh, scientists guess at stature based on the long bones of the legs when they are available. If not, a range of height can be established from nothing more than a single finger or foot bone. Uh, judging ancestry is difficult and controversial. Nevertheless, skeletal attributes such as the ratio of certain skull bones to one another can hint at a particular background. So it's very important to understand the underlying bones for many, many reasons. Um, not just for your understanding of anatomy, but also for pathology as well. So joints or articulations, these are connections between the bones that may or may not permit movement. Can, and this can be done via bone to bone, uh, bone to cartilage, and bone to teeth in, in bony sockets. 
uh, bone and teeth and bony sockets. Uh, so the function of the joints, it's going to give the skeleton mobility and then it's uh, going to hold the skeleton uh, together along with the important uh, ligaments which we're going to look at over our uh, next few uh, videos. Joins are, uh, joints are the weakest part of the skeleton so therefore they are most susceptible so some of the structural uh, classification focuses on the material binding bones together and whether or not a joint cavity is present. Uh, so we have fibrous which are held together by fibrous connective tissue. Uh, there's no joint cavity. Most are removable with enthrosis. There's three types, sutures between the bones of the skull, uh, syndemosis between the tib and the fib, the radius and the ulna as we can see here and then the gophosis between the tooth and its alveolar socket and then we have the cartilaginous which is held together by cartilage and then of course we're going to then have the syndrosis costochondral an example uh, and uh, symphysis between the vertebral bodies which we'll start to look at as we go through our next few videos and into our labs as well then we have synovial, include a synovial cavity surrounded by fibrous capsule. This is the most movable joint uh, and all of these are diathrosis, they are freely uh, movable. So let's look at some of the major movements that you're going to need to consider in your uh, general anatomy and your clinical anatomy. So we uh, discuss things such as flexion extension, so we're going to see flexion of the upper limb, flexion of the lower limb, flexion at the hip flexion at the knee, extension uh, at the hip, extension at the knee, and, and then the same with the upper arm. We also have uh, flexion and extension of the hands, and this is going to be important when you consider things like medium and older ulnar nerve injuries and the various myotomes, which uh, we've also discussed in the other videos uh, and the other videos that you're going to have access to as we go through the musculoskeletal system. We also talk about flexion extension in relation to the fingers, the flexion extension of the digits. And this is at the metacarpopharyngeal and interpharyngeal joints. So these are very, very important. It's very important to understand in relation to uh, normal movement and abnormal movement and some of the uh, kind of pathologies that we consider, some of the musculoskeletal pathologies that we consider. So we also have flexion and extension of the trunk itself, so we can have flexion and extension at the lower back. Uh, as well as that we have something, uh, we have flexion and extension of the foot, but it's actually called dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So we have dorsiflex, where we dorsiflex the foot, and then plantar, where we plant the foot. So you can think of this as the plantar surface and the dorsal surface, so dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. And this happens at the foot, uh, with the foot and the ankle joint. So as, re as well as that, we have to also consider uh, abduction and adduction. So remember, if you put your move your arm away from the midline, we're talking about abduction, abduction, taking something away, adduction, bringing it together, so adding it together, or abducting it, taking it away. We're also going to talk about lateral rotation and medial rotation. So medially rotate, medial rotation is rotating into the uh, to the, the midline, as it were, the medial part. Lateral rotation is going to be going the other way around, laterally rotating away from. Uh, again, with the lower limb, we can have medial and lateral rotation, and we can have abduction and adduction uh, of the lower limb as well. We also talk about circumduction, so circumduction uh, within the foot or the upper limbs, uh, just uh, this uh, circumflex movement. So when flexion, uh, ab uh, abduction, extension and adduction are combined sequentially, this is when we call this final, uh, final movement circumduction. Special movements, the special movements of the ankle, and these include eversion and inversion. This is going to be particularly important when you think about inversion or eversion injuries to the region of the ankle. Like abduction and adduction, uh, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion movement between the tibia and the talus, 
and then we have the movement of the vertebral column which includes lateral flexion bending to the side and here we can just see some uh, special movements we have supination the radius and the ulna and pronation which we're going to talk about all these movements in relation to myotone movements and uh, movements uh, from the uh, central nervous system or in relation to the central nervous system the musculoskeletal system here we can see inversion and eversion so as we talk about eversion eversion and inversion injuries of the ankle joint dorsiflexion and plantar flexion uh, we also talk about opposition for when we test the fingers uh, to test for reflexes of the fingers and to test for the various uh, nerves involved with that so tendons and ligaments basically a tendon is a fibrous connective tissue which attaches muscle to bone tendons may also attach muscles to structures such as the eyeball uh, a tendon serves to move the bone or structure and then a ligament is a fibrous connective tissue which attaches bone to bone and usually serves to hold structures together and keep them stable. So thank you very much uh, for watching my brief introduction. Please uh, follow my other uh, online videos and I also have a three, uh, 3D online library that you can uh, uh, download these models, you can use them, you can adapt them, use them any teaching purpose you see fit or for learning. Uh, please feel free to share them and um, I, uh, if there's any questions please feel free to uh, add uh, any uh, comments or if there's any uh, particular videos you would like to have uh, please add those as well uh, in the link below and I will do my best to cover those subjects.